I am from Jefferson Lab and I am also associated with, with the University of Virginia. We have a non-profit organization, ISOHIM, stands for International Symposium on Hydrogen and Matter. I'm also part of that. ISOHIM is helping to sponsor international workshops on accelerator driven systems on thorium utilization. So in 1950, basically, uh, the Lawrence uh, in, in Berkeley, he proposed use of high power accelerators for producing fissile materials. Later in 1952, uh, Lewis proposed use of thorium with intense neutron generator. And 1992, Charlie Bowman, he also proposed energy generation with accelerated transmutation of the nuclear waste. And 1993, Carlo Rubia from CERN came up with the idea of energy amplifier. Most interesting thing why, uh, though it was proposed in 1950s, these systems were never built, mainly because the cost of generating neutrons per gram at the time of the original proposal was uh, something like 10 to the power of 12 uh, dollars per gram. Jefferson Lab, with its uh, SRF technology, built the first uh, spallation neutron source for Oak Ridge, the main Linux. The cost of the neutrons from 10 to the power of 12 have come down to 10 to the power of 6. So that's the six orders of magnitude reduction in cost of neutron cost per gram. And this technology is further evolved, and we believe uh, now you can get it uh, probably much lower than that. If you want to learn about progress India has made in the thorium energy sector, you need to read an article published by Physics World, volume 23, in October 2010, Enter the Thorium Tiger. India has a unique vision for a secure nuclear energy future based on thorium. As the UK enters a new era of civil nuclear collaboration with India, this gentleman named Matthew Chalmers tours India's nuclear labs with a British High Commission team helping to bring physicists from both countries together. So this was a big uh, article in the physics world. What I am doing from the American side is, you know, India and US are, I think, the two largest democracies. And in the US side, we have accelerated technology, and India doesn't have. And India has the reactor technology, which we uh, are lagging behind, I think, about 40 years now. If we can bring these two together, I think we can bring this uh, system uh, to really practice in a, within a short time, between five to 10 years. So we hope it can be done. Let us see where it goes. Indian Department of Energy has something like 13 laboratories. The top one is the Baba Atomic Research Center, which is about 70 to 80 percent of the DAE. Then there are the Saha Institute of Physics, Nuclear Power Corporation of India, Variable Energy Cyclotron Center, Tata Memorial Center, Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research, where they are building the first fast breeder reactor, which is supposed to be online, I think, in 2013. And then there is a a new center, relatively speaking, it's called Raja Ramana Center for Advanced Technology, and they actually want to build the accelerators for this kind of systems. Then they have other institutions. There is a national university formed these constituent institutes I talked about, which is called Homi Baba National Institute. And we have actually signed a kind of a collaboration, member you, with that institute at the request of Dr. S. Banerjee, who was the director of the BRC at that time. Now he became the chairman of uh, Atomic Energy Commission Government of India and also the secretary department of atomic energy. Basically, he projected the green energy thorium at a conference or at a presentation he gave at University of Virginia. Uh, you can see from his point of view, India has uh, pretty large reserves of thorium and so also is ESA. If you combine these two together, I think uh, we have about 50 percent of energy uh, thorium reserves in the world. If these two countries can come together, I think, and develop this, it would be really fantastic. So India has a three-stage program, and this was put together by Dr. Homi Baba in the early 1950s, and they are now, and the first phase is going on, and they're actually building the fast breeder reactor, as I mentioned. This is uh, happening in Chennai. It's under construction. This is going to come up, I think, uh, in 2013. And then they, they have this stage three program where they'll be breeding thorium uh, from these fast breeders. They believe availability of ADS 
will enable the introduction of thorium uh, right now, really, instead of going through this whole process. And they already have a design uh, for the advanced heavy water reactor, and that will be the demonstration reactor for the large scale thorium utilization. It's almost, I think, finished the safety appraisals by the review board, uh, Atomic Energy Review Board. I think it's been approved, and I think they are trying to find a location for that at the moment. Actually, uh, Dr. Banerjee, there was a Homi Baba Birth Centenary Symposium in 2009, and Dr. Banerjee invited me to come and talk about this, uh, we call Ingat Niobium and Frontier Technology for Nuclear Power. That's the title of my talk. And we have actually done a symposium uh, last September, and the proceedings are just about to come out from AIP. Uh, it's known as AIP Cons Conference Proceedings 1352. If you get a chance, please uh, take a look at it. And the main uh, reason behind uh, trying to push this technology for the ADS is the quality factor of the niobium cavities that will be part of this Linux can be improved by a factor of three compared to what we are now. And that actually reduces the cryogenic system costs by about 60%. That's a large saving in the cryogenic system itself. And the operating cost will be reduced by the same amount, by a factor of three. So that's the reason why the potential cost saving on the neutron generation per gram could be further reduced with this technology. So the initial vision between uh, the two groups on the Indian side and the American side is initially to build two small electron Linux of uh, that of 200 MeV energy uh, combined with a subcritical thorium uh, so that we can address the issues with respect to chemistry and material issues in this uh, experimental and educational and training facilities on each side. Uh, this is what we are hoping to do. And after that, probably the design I showed you, HWR, Potentially, one can be built on each side if this collaboration evolves the way we hope it will. And so the vision is India and US team jointly work on implementing one each accelerator driven uh, subcritical thorium systems. Uh, that's what we are hoping to do in the near future. Then, as I said, we actually have started organizing uh, international accelerator driven system thorium utilization workshops. First of that, hosted by Virginia Tech in collaboration with Jefferson Lab. At this meeting, Dr. Stuart Anderson, who was the uh, accelerator division head at Spalash Neutron Source Oak Ridge National Laboratory, gave a presentation uh, from the committee report that was uh, organized by DUOE Office of Science. The title of this report was Accelerator and Target Technology for Accelerator-Driven transmutation and energy production. This is a white paper uh, from the working group. And the main conclusions, of course, conclusion one was that I didn't want to put up here, that US has no ongoing programs on ADS systems as a whole. This is the one, I mean, we could be leading this, but we have no ac active programs. And the finding two, which is, a, a, I'm sure, interest to this group, Accelerated driven subcritical systems offer the potential for safely burning fuels, which are difficult to incorporate in critical systems. For example, fuel without uranium or thorium. And finding three, the accelerator driven subcritical systems can be utilized to efficiently burn minor actinides. Finding four, accelerator driven subcritical systems can be utilized to generate power from thorium based fuels. And this is the uh, conceptual uh, ADS reactor presented by Dr. Banerjee at this presentation in Charlottesville last May, uh, where you basically have the accelerator putting the proton beam into this one, and you can see the uranium-233 here, and then thorium, and that which gets converted into uranium-233. Do any questions? Does that include both uh, the cost of electricity and capital? And if so, uh, where, where is the plateau from the cost of electricity, which you can't really make cheaper? This was from Charlie Bowman. I really don't know what went into this. That's why I put it on the top. It's his curve, but I really, I'm not here. Yeah. As far as intellectual property, there were to be 
be collaboration. You mentioned like collaboration across the country. Do you have any ideas in mind as far as treatment of intellectual property? We are dealing with mainly research, scientific work here, uh, which is open. Everything that is going to be done under this collaboration will be published. You're so close to Washington, D.C. Are you getting the attention of any politicians as far as legislation for thorium utilization? Uh, I do not know that part, but what happened is this review that DOA Acts of Science did was the result of Dr. Banerjee's visit last year to U.S. So they knew that he was going to come to Washington, ask for collaboration, and they don't know what to say to him because we are not dealing with this, we are not doing anything in this area. And uh, before, a year before, that, everyone felt that accelerator systems are not ready for this purpose. Uh, then the review basically says that they're almost ready, they're there. What do you consider now to be the cost of one gram of neutrons? The last figure we had was one million. No, it's about $100,000 probably. About now, $100,000? Yeah, it's about 10 to the power of 5 then. Thank yeah. you. Okay, well let's thank Dr. Ganapi. Thank you very much.